एंड नमस्ते आपके इस नए एपिसोड में बहुत बहुत स्वागत है दिस इज दिस शो इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी स्पेशल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू स्पेशली इन द वेस्टर्न ऑडियंस पीपल हु आर लर्निंग अबाउट द हिंदू कल्चर इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड एंड आई एम गोइंग टू क्लैरिफाई लॉट ऑफ डाउट्स अबाउट द हिंदू कल्चर इन नॉर्थ अमेरिका and many other places so the i am reading one book and i got it from the library locally it's called world history it's written by holt reinhardt and winston about the cultures various cultures of the world this book is being taught to many american children and also being taught to many european kids and this is book is a complete nonsense believe me that's why i say that the the propaganda is being taught as an education this is european propaganda to justify that how europeans brought civilization to their colonies before europeans came to north america or australia or south america or new zealand or canada these countries were very prosperous europeans brought diseases they brought undisclosed unraveled misery upon these native populations that is a historical fact settlers i mean nowadays you don't see any natives in usa at least i mean i've been searching i have to go to reservations to i have to really make an effort to meet an original american i have to make an effort in australia also to meet original aborigin australian australia is not the right name the name of australia is shalmali according to sanskrit uh, name of usa is crouncher in sanskrit the whole north american continent south american continent is called pushkar in sanskrit now why do i have to make so much effort to see the original inhabitants of this land where is the culture where is the religion where is the language being taught to settler communities settlers are teaching english to everyone settler descendants and since 1776 i am talking about not today so where is that nowhere in countries outside of usa in africa out of all the african union countries 14 speaks french remaining and you know, approximately 19 to 20 speak english where is the language african language being taught in those countries that's the impact of colonialism colonial still doing going on nothing has ended only difference is after 1945 it got replaced by international bodies like united nations or in any many other international bodies they continued their colonial propaganda colonial activities destruction of the native culture is continuing till date there is no courses on native american languages or very few courses on native american languages literally almost like none in american schools there is no effort to study native culture native religion nothing natives have to accept the english language and the church has penetrated them to destroy further their native cultures and the modern society has put pushed in them into reservations which is a shame and also put gambling casinos there to further destroy their local potential now people may say like somebody in australia may say oh we have center link 
what's the point after stealing their land, language, religion, now you give them some monthly al allowances? I think the real test will be when the Native American with its original culture, native culture, religion and practitioner becomes the president of these colonies, all of them including South America. Most of the South Americans speak Spanish or Portuguese nowadays, which is a colonial language, European language. None of these countries can grow permanently because the native ethos, the economy, the culture goes against the nature of the land. Every land has its own religion, culture and ethos and history. And everything is brushed aside as prehistoric. Prehistoric means no need to study. Current history matters, prehistory doesn't matter. So, with this kind of education system, you cannot expect a healthy individual. If I give a chance to Americans and ask them, where do you belong? Let's say I am Italian American, I am German American, I am Finnish American. So their one side of loyalty according to their genes is to their native countries from where they settled here. Same is true with Indian Americans also because the one side of them is Indian genes so their connection to India or any other land is natural. So, but where is a pure American? That is a Native American, they are born here. And anyone who follows their culture and religion and language is also native or at least becoming in harmony with them. Some facts of history cannot be reversed. Now today, in this program, with this background, I am going to talk about Bhagawan Ram. According to the great history book, Ramayan, I am a student of Ramayan, and the more I read it, the less I know. It's amazing, isn't it? The logic goes completely haywire. The more I know it, the less I know. Because it's an ocean of history, culture, language of an era whose ideals are still relevant today. And therefore, the hero of Ramayana, whose character we are studying, is Bhagwan Ram. He sets an example which the whole world can follow. He sets an example which every human being can follow. He creates a standard of governance, standard of etiquette, standard of manners which no one in the world can refuse. He talks about equality, he talks, talks about the predominance of dharma, how dharma can bring peace to every section of human society. And he sets an example in warfare which brings peace, not useless wars which are being created nowadays. And those wars only bring destruction poverty, misery on which it is imposed. And that's what the colonial powers want to do. They want to say, my people, my community needs, has more rights than yours. That is what Bhagwan Ram stood against. He stood against a malice that my world way is the world way. Ravan the, the demon or villain who had bad habits, severe bad habits, severe incidents of terror he did against saintly people and he was punished even though he tried to hit himself in the middle of the ocean. That is the tale of bravery which Bhagawan Ram teaches. And this is not mythology because most of the Americans and the Western kids are being taught that anything prehistory is mythology. 
it is not. It is with full facts. Just like most of the Europeans, when they write this garbage books like this, world history, they want us to believe their books. Why should I believe your book? But when I present them with an alternative of Ramayana, they say, oh, that's mythology. Actually, this is mythology. Because the, the history which is written here has been debunked today itself. But the history of Ramayana has not been debunked till date. And I can give you many proofs of that. Many things, many people say, like if you look at the dialogue in the American political debates nowadays, election season is going on, the, the important issues are being raised against some candidates. Are you a Hindu? Are you vegetarian? The most common staple diet of Native Americans was corn, beans and squash. And those three plants were grown together because they would support each other in nutrients. That was a staple diet for millions of years of Kronjadweep or North America. I am including Canada, I am including Mexico and I am including USA, mainland, including Alaska too. It's part of North American continent. This is a staple diet from Alaska to Mexico. Same is a staple diet in South America, which is called Pushkar, common. So vegetarian diet is a normal diet for a human being. Vegetarian cooked meals. And I know in USA, cooked meals is a novelty. But everywhere else you go in the world, cooked meals is normal. People tend to eat hot meals. The nuking of the food in the microwave is not a common feature. It's only available in the urban centers mostly. In the villages, in the interiors of the United States, or if I go to the reservations, people eat freshly cooked meals. If there were no slaughterhouses, then nobody would like to kill an animal, large animal in their backyard. It's difficult. So the slaughterhouses made this question seem very normal. How can you be a vegetarian? The European poverty in the 16th century, extreme poverty in the 15th century, 14th century, up till 17th century, and now also is going to get poorer. There are German farmers are protesting because a 65 percent rise in the fuel prices for them is going to get back to what it was. And so vegetarian diet was a normal diet. The mythology which is being spread in the West, oh, for food you have to kill animals. Oh, they say it's an animal world. Well, hello. We don't believe in Darwin. We think Darwin was just writing a theory. Origin of species. I have the whole book here with me. And he was writing a theory based on his assumptions. And we all know what does assume mean. A, S, S, U and me. So you can understand what I want to say. Second myth. So vegetarianism. Now they will say, oh, the Hindu scriptures, this is I am talking about the Western Indologist. I don't know why a Christian guy would like to read Ramayana. Why? The only motive can be ulterior, unless they are genuinely trying to move away from Christianism. But Hinduism or Sanatan Dharma is taught in American schools by Christian pastors because they want to do the same thing what they did to Native Americans, but they forget our language is different. Despite living in the US, we have retained our languages, we have retained our culture and we will not compromise on that. 
because the American Constitution allows everyone to follow their religion and culture freely. And this country is made run by over a constitution. It cannot become a church society. So they say is spread by the Western Indologists, supported by the Indian mythologists and Indian Indologists because they get money from these people. Eventually it's going to dry out because based on what we see in Harvard and all these Ivy League schools, the vocism is actually going to destroy their own narrative like this garbage world history. This is a European narrative, it's nothing to do with anyone else. It's for European consumption. And I'll request that the other should not read or they should just go to the Google and verify first. And so they say, these Christian pastors say, Ram, Bhagwan Ram ate meat. And this has spread like wildfire in India. Many Sanskritists, they say that. And I am also a student of Sanskrit. I have been reading Valmiki Ramayana for a long time. And I have heard it from my guru also, who has also happened to read from a long time. Now in Ramayana, Valmiki Ramayana, the fruit pulp, Gudayamas, is also known as, pulp is also known as mass. It is not connected to dead bodies. It is connected to pulp. English word pulp that is called mass. Hmm? We say even today also. So that is Bhagwan Ram never ate meat. It's conclusively proved in Valmiki Ramayana. Bhagwan Ram talks about Yoga Vashisht with Vashisht Muni, speaks about diet. Same message is in Bhagavad Gita. So he never ate meat. But the Europeans would like to understand because they want to justify their understanding. By the way, most of the Europeans couldn't afford meat also. Even today, and I am very happy, it's becoming expensive day by day and slowly it's going to be unaffordable in USA also because it's unnatural diet, unhealthy diet. American Medical Association also speaks about it. Now, the second thing they say that the prehistorical records are not verified. So, they made up some fake departments of education which has no relevance to human lifestyle, paleontology, studying of Jurassic parks or dinosaurs. What is the advantage you get? I have more records of history than all these paleontologists. In Valmiki Ramayana, where every single continent is described over the ages. So the Western authors came up with their own mental imagination, Neolithic, Stone Age, Copper Age and all this nonsense they came up. As if certain metals were used only in certain ages. Hello, all metals have been used since time immemorial in every age. Let me tell you that because the same earth is a source of all these metals. And if you thought that you are today more advanced than the previous age, then why do you cherish your childhood? My question to all of you mythologists and European so-called scholars and their big names nowadays. Just because they have a handle on X, they think that anything they write gibberish is going to be taken up, but not by everybody. There are many people like me, millions of people like me, who question everything. So they say, oh, there was Stone Age. The story of Sri Ram happened so long back. Europeans were gatherer hunters. And even today they are gatherers and hunters. That's what they do to every single continent to gather and hunt. There, nothing has changed here. They will be living civilized because their religion and culture has not taught them to be civilized enough. 
they think that the greatest example of them, they, what they've done in the US, obviously, they ran away from bad experiences as settlers from Europe or some of them were in prison in Europe. They were sent here to populate this continent, to make it a European majority. And so most of the criminals like Louisiana, we all have very much know French prisoners were married off with French prostitutes to send here to Louisiana and start this something. And you can see them populating the entire Louisiana, which was one third of the United States at one point of time, right from southern tip of the United States to northern tip of Canada in the center part. So that was also going on. So this is the colonial way. And they say, they said, we have come to civilize. No, you came to uncivilize. There were civilized people already here who were, who were living off their land. Another logic is they were fighting amongst themselves. It's very natural. Tell me, tell me which European country is not fighting with another European country. They're fighting, all of them are fighting all the time. And if they're not fighting with each other, they're fight, fighting with the world. It's, it's part of the history. So why this charade is being taught? Now let me tell you some prehistory. Valmiki Ramayan talks about North American continent, South American continent and the people in them, the prayers being said in them. Bhagavad Puran talks about prayers of the residents of these islands continents we call them. In Sanskrit, Sanskrit is a very easy language. English there is a capital A and small a. Sanskrit there is no such thing, capital and small, everything is equal. All the letters are equally important. But in European society, something is capital, something is small. Why? Because there is a caste system in Europe today also. In Valmiki Ramayana, there is no such caste system. Everyone is equal. All the Varnas have equal responsibility in their sphere of activity. But they say about Valmiki Ramayana is that, oh, it's a prehistory. It's not geographical facts. Hello, I'm a researcher. I put out books. I have confirmed it with full evidences. One arrow, one kill, and also global footprint of Ramayana. In that, I mentioned about every single continent based on Valmiki Ramayana. Right from Shalmali Dweep, which is Australia, Pushkar Dweep, which is South America, Manasotar Pahar, which is the border of Chile, the highest peak on the border of Chile and Argentina, and North American continent, Crunch Dweep, which was destroyed by. Skanda, and that's why you see many islands in the north, small, small islands. And the Jambu Deep, which is Asia, Plaksha Deep, which is of Africa, and many such references I've given. This, that completely ties down exact nature which has not changed. So Valmiki Ramayana, what it describes about the world is the world is even like that today. Geographically, not a single mountain has moved. Rivers can move and dry, but mountains don't move. It's still there. Seven, seven large mountains and seven large rivers are there in every single continent. Kranjadeep is a continent of lakes and we can see some of the largest freshwater lakes is in North America, in the world. All that is mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. Tasmanian Sea, which is between Australia and New Zealand, it is a very violent ocean even today. The waves are very high, very difficult to cross, very difficult for ships. It's still there like that. Most of the Australian or Sharmali Deep is a desert mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. 
सो वाल्मीकि रामायण इज अ टेक्स्ट फॉर द वर्ल्ड नॉट जस्ट फॉर हिंदूज हिंदू इज आर दोज हु फॉलो वेद द ओल्डेस्ट रिपोजिटरी ऑफ नॉलेज इन द वर्ल्ड इज देर इन माई बैक ओवर देयर पुराण मेक दैट नॉलेज मोर connected with our society our society in the past our society today we have description about people in the past and now most of the europeans because they have no such history and they are believing in this propaganda items which they created nonsense complete garbage and i'm keeping the garbage with me because i read it thoroughly what they read over there they say aliens everything is alien came from another continent it's very normal for people from other planets to visit this planet this planet if it is left only to human beings human beings will destroy this planet which we see all the time we have seen western countries bombing any country at will killing whimsically for no reason they also dropped a nuclear bomb to finish a war and therefore this planet has been managed by someone else more powerful and who has direct interest in the affairs i'll give you some examples without sun no life can exist but in ramvalmiki ramayan sun is the place of residence of surya devata without moon there will be no food on this planet which the modern science is discovering now i am saying modern science is european science only for europe it's modern for us it's normal european science is discovering all these things as new that just showed how backward they were just by making some tools you cannot create a civilization tools don't create culture you can sow a seed from a tractor or you can sow a seed in the soil from hand the outcome is going to be the same if it is put in the right depth in the soil and it is watered properly along with the along as per the rules of how to grow that seed as per the normal uh, hindi is not, english is not my main la- language so you can excuse me over there for me i have to think in another language and translate in english even though i write books in english and it's for educating all of you so the culture the language all these things which europeans teach is for themselves not for the world for the world we have our own books ramayan mahabharat puran ved upanishad these are our books and these books are for humanity europeans should also leave aside all the garbage they teach you teach themselves and focus on these books it's a valid prehistory real history not just mythology that's why we call it satology and there you will see examples of aliens coming here the different planets having influence on the soil and the vegetation and also on human potential we see that the third aspect is that denigrating the native cultures how many of you know that there is a prayer being said by the residents of crouncha which is north america and which is considered a bona fide prayer you didn't know that but that is mentioned in bhagavad puran every continent has a specific focus and therefore those cultures follow those particular traditions what the europeans did was call them shaman and pagan pagan means pagan. like a stone literally and shaman means someone backward or some voodoo craft uk practiced witchcraft until 
you can understand. Monarchy, UK is not a democracy, it's a monarchy. They're proud of monarchy, they like to be slaves. Actually monarchy cannot create slaves, but it's literally like caste system there. The caste, the monarch is above all rules. It might change, might not change, but that's the old Saxon law. And that's why they're called Anglo-Saxons. And, and, but rest of the countries should be following democracy because the West can interfere freely. Coming to the third myth, which is about astronomy, cosmology. Even today, the Europeans are teaching fake cosmology, fake earth sciences to everybody. Valmiki Ramayana describes about cosmology and astronomy in a much more accurate way, which has stood the test of time and after the European mythology on cosmology is over, it will again stand the test of time. Because it is given or written by people who were experts in those topics. We have not seen any experts on these topics. Attend any American university or any university in Europe and you will see maybe this, maybe that. If he said that, he said that. And people get Nobel Prizes for no reason, God for second reason. I don't know why. There are much more information in Puran Veda, which a simple child can tell you. And these European scientists spend so much money, take so much money, the whole education is a business. And in the ancient cultures, education, medicine and food were free. But in Europe, these three were taxed. And they still have the audacity to call Ramayana as a mythology. Actually, the, everything European history is a mythology, is a narrative of somebody. If I am comparing. So, there is a lot more to talk about. The Ram Temple is opening and on January 22nd, I think that will be beginning of an end to everything European mythology. The current history is mythology because Everything is a narrative. Everything is a propaganda. So, read Valmiki Ramayana. And if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe. And let us know your feedback. Thank you and Namaste.